You're listening to Live Wild Radio, the part-time adventure podcast. Join us as we explore how outdoor adventures build mind, body, and spirit. Before we get to the show, we have a partner for this episode, GreatLakesGearYa.com. Uh, and for our American friends, us.greatlakesgearia.com. And they make great quality kettlebells at great prices. The handles are awesome. Um, if you've ever used kettlebells before, you know how important that is. And if you go to checkout and use the code LIVEWILD, you'll save 5%. Um, and that's a big deal because right now a lot of places don't even have any kettlebells. These guys have them coming out their ears. They're happy to ship them to you. Great guys to deal with. And in addition to the kettlebells, they've got all sorts of other fitness equipment, including barbells, dumbbells, weighted maces, all the fun stuff. So go to greatlakesgearyou.com, promo code LIVEWILD, and save yourself 5%. Welcome back to Live Wild Radio, the part-time adventure fitness and get your life together podcast Um, because we kind of veer all over the place as far as the topics we cover they kind of have a theme um it's about using adventure to make your life better um and part of adventure is fitness and being in shape and so we talk a lot about fitness and one of the things you're going to run into as a human being is injuries (laughs) so that's actually what we're going to talk about today um You know, ideas and ways of coping, like working through, you know, we're not talking like a broken bone here. We're talking like the little pain in the ass niggles that, uh, you know, you shouldn't ignore, but, um, you know, you're not going to the hospital for. That's right. Yeah. So, So you're going through something right now. Yeah, so Winston asked me, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, the only thing that's been going on for a while are these injuries I'm trying to overcome, and it's really annoying. And so currently, there's a couple things I'm going through. So I I may have mentioned it on the podcast, but for about a year now, I've been feeling numbness in my feet. And unfortunately, it happened, started to appear right at the end of the 10,000 kettlebell swing challenge, which we thought were just tight calves. But... um, you know, I started to look into it more thoroughly and went to a neurologist. And after a scan of my spine, we've seen that I've got some severe degeneration in my lower spine and my neck. My neck's probably because of work. And by the way, I have no pain. Yeah. So that's a plus. <laughs> and everybody's saying, wow, <laughs> you should. Um, but in my lower back, it's probably um, putting some pressure on some nerves that are going down to my feet. Um, so we're trying a couple different things, including, you know, if I do have any tight calves, um, to try and relax them. And I have noticed some improvements. So that's, that's a light at the end of the mm-hmm. tunnel. But, you know, it can be tricky when you're doing things and um, you have this constant thing that's a little bit concerning, right? Um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing that kind of resurfaced I lived for about a year in this apartment, this house that that had no stairs. And um, shortly one day I had to go to a friend's house and I had to walk down their stairs. I'm like, holy shit, my knees really hurt. Like, and it kind of gave out. Um, For people who know me, I have um, bad knees, um, osteoarthritis, stage four on my right and stage two on my left. Stage four is the last stage before you get a knee replacement. But I've managed to steer away from any of the uh, symptoms of that in terms of like not being able to live my life, not being able to do things because I've lost um, quite a bit of weight when I first was diagnosed with it, about 50 pounds and strength trained. So that was concerning that that was happening again. Doesn't that actually, uh, the the cool thing is, is that when you had the apartment with stairs, um, the knees got better at going up and down stairs. And then when you had the house... Well, you didn't really notice it getting better, but it, you, I certainly noticed it uh, not even a year. We were only there for 10 months. Yeah. But how much worse? And also, I used to walk up and down the stairs at my work, right? Mm-hmm. That was the other thing I noticed, too. So I thought that was, wow, this is not my friend's stairs are not unusually high. <laughs> it's like everywhere when you're going up a flight of stairs more so, right? Um, I just don't bounce. 
and I was, anyways, I, I was a little concerned about that. Actually, I was kind of more than concerned because we were backpacking in um, the Red River Gorge. Mm-hmm. Not backpacking, but we were like, you know, hiking to the approaches and sometimes mm-hmm. our 45 minute hikes going downhill on even terrain. So it's worse than stairs, mm-hmm. right? Plus you're carrying like a 30, 40 pound pack. Um, yeah, so... That was, yeah, I was really, I felt like I was really put in my place. And, um, yeah, I was concerned about that. Mm. So I went and saw, what did I do about my knees? What did we realize? We just realized, because we were wondering a couple things. But it's it's the, really sort of the law of specificity. Yeah. Um, you know, it, or, or uh, as we call it, use it or lose it. Yeah. Um, because if you don't do a thing, you don't get good at a thing. You lose your ability to do that thing. And as we're getting older... It's pretty scary. You actually. lose it quicker. Yeah. Right? That just seemed really frighteningly tr- fast. Mm-hmm. How much I lost that. So lately, the one thing that I... I wonder if it was inflammation because I started eating carbs again. Like a mm-hmm. lot of carbs. Like beer and pizza. <laughs> Not necessarily the good carbs. And so inflammation typically is hard on my body. Mm-hmm. And my knees. So I wasn't sure if it was that or um, I was chalking it up to, I think it was that, or just not even being used to hiking, you know, conditioning mm. your knees, yep. um, which very much is probably accurate. Um, yeah, just, uh, and basically after that, um, I started doing step downs. Uh, my chiropractor just, you know, pointed out you're probably weak in, in those muscles. So you should consider doing one legged box squats. Um, I can't even do that, um, with one leg. So I would just went to a yoga block and I simply stepped down or even just like a stair and yep. step down controlled, a controlled step down. Yeah, slow and touch your heel <clears throat> down. And touch your heel down, serve your toe. And so if you do that repetitively, five times and I noticed after a couple of workouts that seemed to really really improve yeah. I'm, I don't know if it's because of that or I started keto yeah and then well but I th- this is the thing it's like because we're taking a multi-pronged approach to fixing the problem yeah the it's not going to be any one thing right the training's going to help because yeah. you know and also on your mobility day doing sissy squats those are really good for the knees too yeah 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 right yeah. Um, so you're doing step down, sissy squats, plus regular squats, plus, you know, deadlifts and swings and, you know, so there's yeah. a, you're, the whole. And hamstring curls. Yeah. Which I never do. So some good exercises to try and get back into your routine mm. and round things out so you can walk downstairs yeah. and not complain. Yeah. You don't have to side shuffle. Yeah. That's yeah. what I do when I hike. Yeah. It's actually really bad. Like. Yeah. On the downhills. Which is very gingerly too, like you, because the thing is, is that with your knees, you can't take a jolt. I cannot. You know, I was actually biking the other day, and I almost ran into something, and um, it was like a gate guard, you know, for a path, and I was worried that I wasn't going to make it through, and so I had to suddenly turn my bike, but my my foot jolted against something, mm-hmm. and I felt it in my knee, and I was in pain for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Getting old. 47 years. Yep. You know, whereas, you know, like when you think about, and it, it's purely because of the knees, right? But like when we've been down in the DAX, uh, you know, coming down mountains, you know, you, you see with my poles how I'll like jump from rock to rock. Yeah. You know, but you can't do that. Maybe if I was drugged up on something. You know, but I mean, but just. I from, remember doing that in the past, even yeah. when I was heavier. I'm like, oh, Tan on uh, <laughs> what was ibuprofen? Yep. I feel like I'm Wonder Woman. Um, you know, but but it, because I can absorb those impacts. Yeah. Right. So you yeah. basically just don't have I a can't. lot of slack in the system as far as I your knees are concerned. At all. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't know. What do you recommend to people like me? <laughs> so so that basically, ca- yeah, Catherine as as our uh, as the the. Uh, Impetus for this episode um, kind of lets us address like issues that a lot of people run into. So w- if we'll start with knees, right? Because it's so common that people have buggered up knees. Yeah. Right. So number one, 
Get it, it checked out. Yeah, obviously. Right? You know, go see your doctors, all that kind of stuff. But just from a training standpoint, number one is something like step downs. Mm-hmm. Right? It trains all those little muscles around the knee. Um, and it trains you control, one-legged control. Um, another thing, and and you've got to get creative in how you do this, um, is... Uh, backward sled dragging, like walking backwards, dragging something. Yeah. So um, you could get an old tire and just attach a rope to it, you know, and drag it. But what is that working? Is that your quad or your hams? No, it's all it's all front. It's all it's knees. All front? Yeah. But it's that motion, mm-hmm. right? The backwards step. Yep. Um, or backwards uphill walking. If you can, like a a grass toboggan hill, mm-hmm. you know, walk up it backwards. Yeah. Um, that could be highly effective. Yeah. So, so any type of backwards walking against resistance, um, dragging a sled, dragging your kids, dragging whatever, um, you know, and if you can get like, uh, it's sort of going to be more higher rep to get some blood flow to the area, Mm -hmm. you know, so three to five sets of two minutes at a time. Right, so so it's not we're not doing reps. How many times a week? Um, uh, you know, two to three. Okay. Um, so pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, same thing with the step downs. Um, you know, you don't need any big crazy heavy weights or anything for those. You know, it's just not a, at all. You don't need it. Like it's just, just slow and controlled. Yeah, to stand at the edge of a step, like facing, like you're going down the stairs on the last step. Yeah. And step down. Um, and the leading leg that is stepping down, pull your toes up so your heel taps lightly and slow and controlled up and down. It hits all mm-hmm. those little stabilizers. It hits the, the main movers. It's everything. It teaches coordination, like everything to fire together properly. And that could be part of the problem is that things aren't, because you haven't done something in a while, mm-hmm. things are just not firing properly. Yeah. Not, not that you're not strong. Yeah. Okay. But, but the thing is, it's like you can be strong, but if you can you need to be able to express that strength in different planes of motion, right? And that's where practice comes in. That's why with a lot of new movements, you progress so quickly with them because you already have a base. Yeah. Yeah, so so those two, um, backwards walking um, and step downs, one of the most, or two of the most effective things you could do for your knees. Yeah. Um, and then um, adding in, uh, because everybody should be doing some sort of hip hinge already, okay. right? Because we, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. Um, adding in like leg curls, banded leg curls, you know, towel resisted leg curls where somebody holds a towel o- over your feet. Um, because when you're doing like a kettlebell swing or a Romanian deadlift, um, it's only two heads of the hamstring muscle that get used. Um, but one of them is for bending your leg, right, for the hamstrings. So you need something that bends your legs in there. And that, because it crosses the knee, um, will help stabilize the knee from the rear. Right. No, by making that stronger. Any others? For the knees particularly? Yeah. Um, then I think the, the other big one um, is the glute medius. I was going to ask you about that. Because with women... Um, Women are qu- tend to be quad dominant, where men are glute dominant when they walk. But for women, what isn't strong are their glutes. So some of the things that I started doing that I had noticed to try and recruit those muscles, because it was shown that they just weren't firing, uh, and this would help me in backpacking, going down hills, is um, glute bridges. And sometimes you can even do it with a band banded glute bridge so it just adds more resistance and um when you bring your butt up you want to just hold it for a couple seconds then you'll get that intensity the other one is like the clamshell where you're lying on your side uh knees bent at a i guess 90 degree angle and you can't see your knees and then you just you know with a band again you pulse you know 10 seconds or whatever 10 times bring it down, do it another 10 times. And I find that that really can strengthen that area pretty quickly. Um, you can also, with a band, um, get into, you know, a bit of a, a semi-squat stance. And what are they called? You're doing side steps? Yeah, side steps. 
with a band around, like just above your knees. Yeah, and the one where you're just going forward like a soccer, like a football player. What's that called? Monster walk. Monster walk. Yeah. yeah. Back and forth. I actually really notice that on my knees, actually, going backwards. And that's to what your point mm-hmm. is in walking backwards. It yeah. puts a lot more stress. Um, you also talked about the sissy squat. Mm. Yeah, going back to the knees. Yeah, sissy squat is like old school bodybuilding exercise. Um, you're up on your toes. You need something to hold on to for balance. And without only bending your knees, um, you squat down. So your hips stay straight. So you, you basically are... Um, Leaning backwards really far, yeah, with bent knees, almost like you're doing um, what's that? Uh, that competition that dance, a limbo, a limbo, yeah, it's almost like what you, you, you yeah. you're getting really low that way, but it, but it, what you're doing is really a standing leg extension, um, so instead of on yeah. the machine, so they it, really work the knees, it'll improve your limbo, yeah, really, because <laughs> it was interesting, we went dancing not mm-hmm. too long ago, and I noticed like my knees were bothered yeah that's sad if you love to dance and mm-hmm. your knees bug you they got better as we got as the night went on yeah you got warmed up i know it's not terrible it's so embarrassing you know well and i think it's one of the things too because like what did you have on for shoes flat shoes yeah which is better than high heels oh god yeah but but I can't I, wear heels. like i had a pair of like you know stylish like oboes casual shoes but they're but they've got arch support. I was so <laughs> jealous how low he could go. Oh, when when we were doing like the the dirty dancing. Yeah, you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. I was really I was pissed off actually. <laughs> I'm like, that's not fair. Yeah. Well, there's things you can do I can't do. I know. You know. I'm surprised you didn't shake your booty, and start twerking, going no, low. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't do that. My hips don't move like that. Mm. So you know, like I said. Yeah. Uh, things you can do that I can't do. <laughs> um, no, so so when it comes to knees, uh, those things, if you take it and um, walk backwards, do step downs, and leg curls of some sort, um, whether it's with a dumbbell, a leg curl machine, a band, you know, what we want to do is just activate that head of the hamstring that crosses um, the knee uh, that bends your leg. Um, and fundamentally I find if you take and do those things and then, and then, uh, um, you know, the glute medius, which controls the external rotation of your leg, yeah. um, you'll do a lot to remove the instability from your knees. Yeah. Right? I, I think I've already noticed an improvement, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. I will say on a, on a bright note, because I've overcome this injury, was my uh, elbow, tennis elbow. Mm-hmm. That was a bitch. Yeah. Um, that was for a good six, six, eight months. Something like that. Something stupid. Mm-hmm. And so we figured out a way, because um, I even wore the, the straps, but it really did nothing for me. Because um, I think I was doing like a lot of body rows. Mm-hmm. Um, and it bothered my chin ups. I haven't done a chin up in a while. Mm-hmm. I'm almost afraid um, to go try. <laughs> but I noticed that, um, yeah, all of a sudden it was gone because we worked around them. Mm. And I think the kind of things that we were doing was it was it was really bothered when I had a grip because mm-hmm. of your forearm, all the pressure. Yeah. But if I loosened that grip, um, even with the body rows, it was the way you held it. I think you told me mm-hmm. um, with the rings, not to squeeze so much, mm-hmm. but just hook. Is that what you were saying to do yeah. or something like that? And then it would, uh, it'd work a little bit better, but it didn't seem to prevent because, um, and I say that um, my, my progress, because I was still at first, I wasn't able to do um, chin ups, but I was certainly, you know, once it healed, able to do more chin ups than I did when I first started. Mm-hmm. So obviously, that wasn't inhibited. Yeah, you you probably lost a little bit of grip. Yeah, um, which would affect you know multiple chin ups. You know when it, the grip starts to fail, but um, but you run into the thing where everything else is stronger. Yeah, everything else was stronger to allow me to do even more chin ups than I did mm-hmm. to begin with. Yeah, so that was good. And the other issue for you climbers out there, um, I had a swollen. 
inflamed joint in my hand, my knuckle. So my, you know, my middle finger was telling me to fuck off. <laughs> and um, I think it was a combination of just climbing too soon and jujitsu or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, it really was aggravating in a lot of things that I was doing. And when it came to climbing, I didn't notice it until like a, after the climb that I did too much. It's a problem we went into that the, the fingers, like all the tendons and everything yeah. are fragile. Um, it's a case of like gradually ramping up the volume yeah. to build a tolerance. Because the problem is connective tissue, like your, your ligaments and tendons, um, strengthen way slower than your muscles do. So you run into the thing where um, you need to like, basically it takes like months and months for for adaptations to happen yeah. in the connective tissue. And I didn't quite know what it was. And I, I'm pretty certain it was from climbing. Maybe the jiu-jitsu, like the, um, the sparring, the mm-hmm. way I hit my hand might have aggravated something. But I say it was the climbing because when I went back to climbing just for fun, I noticed without putting a lot of pressure on things, I was, I had, I had known, learned my lesson to go easy. Don't climb for more than 30 minutes kind of thing and just go easy. And, um, that all of a sudden both hands, the knuckles were inflamed. I'm like, aha, I know what this is. So go easy. Yeah. Because anything with the hands, right. It comes into the thing of, uh, any injuries are, are hard to heal because we use our hands all the time. Yeah. Right. Um, and like when you get like tendonitis, which is like basically an inflamed tendon, um, you run into the thing where it is, uh, needs just rest. Like it needs time to heal. Yeah. Right. So you can't keep climbing. You can't keep, you know, and the, the part that sucks is it can take two, three weeks or longer. Nobody wants to do that. You know, so that, that's always one of those things to bear in mind. It's like, this is why it's so important not to, like, basically to take the preventative measures not to get injured. Oh, yeah. Because injuries just take so goddamn long to heal, right? And yeah. the, And, you know, you're not making progress when you're, when you're injured. But I learned how we could work around some things. Yeah. Right. And still progress in other areas that maybe you weren't focused on, but, hey, it's something. Yeah. Well, and it's sort of one of those things like Mark Bell... You know, the, the slingshot guy, mm-hmm. you know, the power lifter. Yeah. Um, he's got a whole line of, like, his whole line of products, right? He came up with the slingshot because his shoulders were so beaten up, but he still wanted to be able to bench press, right? Um, knee wraps, wrist wraps, elbow wraps. And you can use um, blood flow occlusion bands, too, mm-hmm. for a tennis elbow, can't you? Yeah, because you can train, keep training, but it's so light, it's not going to hurt the tendons. Um, so basically, restricting blood flow to your muscles has the same training effect as if you're doing... Really heavy weight. Yeah. yeah so using, you can do low weights, like higher 10, volume. 10 to 20% of your maximum. Um, so because you're... Um, res- basically, these compression bands you put around your upper arm, and it limits the blood going back out. Um, so what you run into is there's more metabolic waste products, um, and more fatigue quicker with lighter weights. So you get this great training effect, but it's easy on your joints because it's baby weights. You know, like when I do it, it's like I'm doing dumbbell curls with eight pound dumbbells. You know, like if I didn't have the bands on, it'd be one of those things like I could juggle them. You know what I mean? But you can get a massive pump um, when you do the blood flow restriction training. So you do 10 to 20% of your maximum yep. weight. Um, uh, and then one of the simple things to do is just um, first set, 30 reps, rest 30 seconds. And then four sets of 15 after that with the same weight um, with 30 seconds between them. And you'll just like your arms will be on fire. Nice. And you can do that for biceps, triceps, forearm exercises. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I was pretty impressed with that. What about you? Is there any injuries that you overcame that you're like, ha ha? Um, 
elbows because I was running into the same thing you were. Yeah. Um, that niggle in my shoulders. Yeah. That's gone. Yeah, but we were not doing as heavy. Well, lifting. I'm doing heavier we... now because I'm pressing like 140 pounds overhead. What was your max before at the gym? Uh, um, was 135. Oh wow. Um, but because the kettlebells aren't fixed in position. Right. It creates its own arc. It's a much more natural movement. Yeah, because of the barbell. It puts a lot of strain on your elbows. Yeah. I find. And your wrists maybe, but your yeah, elbows in particular. And yeah. the shoulders. Yeah. So. You know, so so a lot of my issues have actually just been sort of fixed themselves by not using barbells anymore. It's interesting because I know... You're a big proponent, many people are, of using free weights mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. rather than machines. Yeah. In a way, it's kind of like the same thing. As mm -hmm. long as you're doing it the correct way, yeah. that's the key for form. Yeah. The form's correct so you don't hurt well, yourself. Well, and that's why, like, say, uh, I'd much rather have the average, you know, general population client to do trap bar deadlifts rather than barbell deadlifts, right? Because they're not getting... They're not having to move their body around the bar kind of thing or the body, the bar around their body. Yeah. They're just in the middle. Yeah. Um, so it's basically a little bit more uh, joint friendly. Mm. Um, you know, so anytime, you know, because unless there's a specific reason for something, especially, you know, if you're over 35, um, you know, dumbbell bench press instead of barbell bench press. It's easier on your elbows and shoulders. Um, you know, you take and just pick the options that are easier on your joints. It's still hard work. You can't maybe use as much weight, but, um, because you're picking more joint friendly exercises, yeah. um, you're, you're reducing your risk of, again, getting any injuries. Yeah. Going back to the knees for a second, I did find that just doing a nice, uh, relaxed bike ride mm -hmm. for like an hour. Um, we talk about doing it. It's like a maintenance ride is what it is where your heart rate for me is between 120, 130, something yeah, like that. It's an aerobic ride. Yeah. For about an hour. Um, really limbers everything up, gets the blood flowing. Mm -hmm. Without, then, without any without, burn. Without any impact or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and, and if you have knee problems, like cycling is one of the kindest things you can do to your knees. Uh, make sure your seat's at the right height, uh, which is. Uh, as a rough rule of thumb, uh, 0.883 of your uh, uh, inseam length. You know, so if you know what your inseam is. You can What's your inseam? The le your leg length. Got it. Um, uh, so that definitely can help. Like, you know, when you're riding, that basically, you know, a light gear, you're, you're lubricating the joints. You know, pumping fluid through them, essentially. So that's always a good um, good thing to do. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, if people have bad backs, that's one I'm familiar with. Uh-huh. Um, you know, hip flexor stretches, number one. Mm. Um, number two, suitcase carries, which is basically just lifting, uh, picking up a weight in one hand. And walking with it. And however far you walk with one hand, turn around and walk back with the other and so that they're even. Um, but it strengthens um, a lot of those core muscles in the lower back. Um, the QL, like the, the sheet of muscle that goes from your hip to your kidneys mm -hmm. or hip to your ribs that covers your kidneys. Um, because you have this movement going on in the hips as you walk. Um, you know, basically this back and forth movement. Um, and you need muscles that tie it all together. And the QL just doesn't get trained very much, but but suitcase carries are a great way to train it. Mm -hmm. um, plus it strengthens the obliques, you know, keep you upright. And then, uh, obviously strengthen your entire core, and that includes your lower back. So things like that are, aren't very heavy, like... Back raises are great for your lumbar spine. Strengthen your glutes if you want a stronger, like, or, or less back pain. Um, 
your abs, like everything basically under your chest and above your legs. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to say, because I, I imagine some people who are listening are office workers. So I had mentioned I got my MRI scan of um, MRI. I got my spine scanned by the MRI. And they noticed some pretty significant degeneration in my neck. And I can't explain any of that. There's been never an injury, an accident that I can recall. The only thing I can think of is just chronic everyday use at the office. That would hunch forward. Hunch forward. Looking at a screen. Yeah. Because I have that pain in between my uh, shoulder blades, Mm -hmm. um, that tension, which is kind of all related. Because your head's forward. (laughs) Yeah. So it's not like one of those acute injuries that you feel and you're in so much pain. It's just something that kind of builds up over time. But stop that shit. You know, like Mm -hmm. seriously, get that checked out because that's that's a real surprise to me. And um, had I known that I was headed down this road, I can't reverse it. All I can do is try and um, increase the mobility of my spine. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a chiropractor. As part of my um, my health practice for now for my spine, I'm going to be seeing a physiotherapist. But um, so I'm seeing a chiropractor, and he's trying to see what he can do to try and um, just get things back, functionally speaking, as much as he can. And then from there, we will see a massage therapist and physiotherapist to see what kind of exercises I can do. But um, yeah, I've just been trying to do some neck mobility exercises in the morning now, just to make things a bit better. And it makes a difference. So and when it comes to neck, um, and actually when it comes to a lot of these, like um, look up Tim Anderson's uh, work on original strength. It's all of the developmental movements that babies do instinctually um, to get to the point where they can walk. Um, nobody teaches them how to do it, but they do head nods, you know, Um which strengthens your neck and gives you, you know, basically develops more mobility. Rocking is good for your hips. Crawling works on the gait pattern. You know, you got to crawl before you can walk. Um, and then rolling uh, in various patterns. You know, and it, it really is. It's great because if you're rolling, you obviously have to have mobility in your spine. Right? It naturally develops it. Um, without it, without even being that hard, you know what I mean? You're not doing some big stretch or anything like that. So, uh, original strength, Tim Anderson, definitely worth, uh, uh, buying the book. Yeah. You've commented several times how good you feel after doing all the baby exercises. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, It works. It's that kind of thing. It's just those little pieces. I feel like giving you a soother. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, but you, 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 uh, head nod and you rock right beside me in the morning. I thought you were going to ask for a boob. (laughs) Next. Think of it as a, uh, ongoing holistic practice, you know, for yourself, right? The idea of, while there are different professionals out there that can help you, you are the captain of your own ship, right? So it's that kind of thing of like, uh, uh, Going, hey, this hurts, and getting on top of it. Like, that's one of the things, like, I'm really proud of Catherine for. It's like, um, she's like, okay, I've got these problems. And she would go see professionals. We would talk about it. We would implement a program, and they're improving. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, whereas she could be one of those people that has the problem, complains about the problem, but doesn't do anything about it. You know, and that's not been my experience with you so that that's actually you know really really good um so with those kind of like little niggle injuries what i would say to everybody is um just about any of them um obviously there's always a way to work around them so you can still stay active Mm -hmm. and there's going to be you know, sometimes you don't get to do the fun stuff. You got to do some weird remedial stuff or boring stuff just to give it time to heal. Yeah. And Find then, another hobby. <laughs> yeah. And then you got to build up again. Yeah. You know, 
And but but if you sort of stay on top of it, you will run into the thing where shit will get better. You know, and then something else will go wrong because <laughs> it's never ending. Yeah. You know. But it's it's taught us um, to include mobility in our morning routines every yeah. morning, you know, every morning, just yeah. when you get up. Yeah. You know, it's like move and stretch or stretch and move. Yeah. You know? Yoga has become a part of my practice. Yeah. Just to, because I've been told, I already knew that I had a tight thoracic spine or mm-hmm. that midsection of my back. Um but I didn't really pay attention to Allison. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's probably shaking her head. But um, <clears throat> it took me to see a you know, neurologist to get an MRI to realize, holy shit, this is going on. Mm-hmm. But you know me. I don't always accept the uh, news from the first person I hear it from. No. <laughs> Most of the time it's from you. You know. And basically it's one of these deals, right? Like it's better to come to something late than never to come to it at all. <laughs> There's still hope. So with that, uh, have a good night, guys. Yeah, and uh, stay tuned for our next episode. And uh, remember to work hard. And play dirty.